All right, so in this video, we're going to briefly overview the distributive property of multiplication over addition and subtraction. Now, this is not a property you need to memorize because uh, we simply need to think about what the word distribute means. Distribute, as written here, right, means to give something out or to deal out. Um, and they even quote, information leaflets are being distributed to hotels and guest houses. And synonyms are give out and deal out, dole out, dish out, hand out, and so forth. Because all those things mean to distribute. And this property, the distributive property, also means the same thing, only with numbers and symbols. So if we have A times B plus C, that means we distribute the A to both B and C using multiplication. Because this means A multiplied by the sum of B and C. So A times B plus a times c is equivalent. This is the distributive property over addition, because we're adding. Likewise, if we have a times b minus c, that is the same thing as a b minus a c. This is the distributive property um, of multiplication over subtraction. What this might look like with numbers is something you already know uh, of addition, right? Let's say we have 3 times 2 plus 1. This is 3 times 3, really, or 9, but it's the same thing as 3 times 2, which is 6, plus 3 times 1, which is 3. 6 plus 3 is 9. With subtraction, same idea. If we have 3 times 2 minus 1, this is really 3 times 1, or 3, but we can also distribute and say it's 3 times 2 minus 3 times 1, which is really 6, right, minus 3, which is 3. Now, you might be saying with numbers, why bother using the distributive property? Well, there are certain cases where it's extremely efficient to use the distributive property. But imagine uh, how important it is in algebra. Because unlike with numbers, with algebra, we can't always add the terms we're given. So, for example, perhaps you have something like this. 3 times x plus 2. Now, we can't add x plus 2. Right? But it turns out we can distribute this 3 to think about it as 3 times x plus 6. And these are equivalent. And that might seem really insignificant here. But sometimes this distribution is the only way to move forward with the expressions we're given. Now let's say we had negative 3 times x plus 2. What would happen then? Well, then we'd have negative 3 times x, or negative 3x. And then negative 3 times 2, which is negative 6. So you can write plus minus 6, or just negative 3x minus 6. Same thing. We could also reverse it up by adding negative signs on the inside of the parentheses. Let's say we have negative 3 times negative x minus 2. Well, here we get positive 3x because we have negative 3 times negative x plus 6. Because this is subtraction here, right? So it's, it's subtracting 2. So you can think of subtracting 2 as plus negative 2. So we can think of this as negative 3 times negative x plus negative 2. And that looks a little bit nastier, but explains as to why we use the subtraction sign uh, as a negative here. Often you won't write this, but no, just know this is what's happening in the background. We're thinking of negative 3 times negative x as positive 3x, and we're thinking of the second term, subtracting 2, as adding a negative 2. So it's really negative 2 times negative 3, which is positive 6. Um, one thing you want to think about um, with the distributive property does not apply. We don't distribute multiplication over multiplication. We distribute it over addition and subtraction. What I mean is something like this. Um, if students see something like this, they might write, OK, we have 3x times 2. Now, this means two groups of 3x or 6x. That's correct. But there are, you know, with algebra, especially when you're learning it, it's so easy to confuse what's happening. You might want to distribute. You might see parentheses here and think that you would do 2 times 3, which is 6, and then you think 2 times x, which is 2x, and you might get something like this, right? 6 plus 2x, but this is not true. Um, and you don't have to memorize it. If you're encountering something like this and you're thinking, oh, should I distribute? What do I do? What do I do? How does this work? Think of numbers. Um, if you have 2 times 3, 3 times 4, so here you're setting x to 4, right? What is the answer? Well, use the order of operations. 3 times 4 is 12, times 2 is 24. 
If you took 2 and multiply it by 3 and then times 4, think about what's really happening. If you did that, you would have 6, so I'll write this over here, 2 times 3 is 6, and then plus 2 times 4 is 8, you would get 14, right, which is not 24. Um, here, there's multiplication, so we don't distribute over multiplication. Sometimes students get something like this, they say, well, 2, well, this is disconnected here, so 2 times 3 is 6, and then they multiply that by 2 times 4, which is 8. In that case, you get 48, right, which is not 24 which is what we need to get. And there, if you think of what's happening, you're doubling, you're multiplying by 2 twice, so you're doubling twice, you're really multiplying 3 times 4, which is 12, by 2 twice, or by 4, which is why you get 48. So when you're distributing, you don't distribute over, over multiplication. Um, when, in these multiplication problems, to get 6x, you might think of the associative property. So 2 times 3x is the same thing as 2 times 3, right, times x. Right, you associate the 2 and the 3 first and multiply them, and that's where we get 6x from. Thank you.